Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Turn to your neighbor, tell him this is your day to be blessed and to learn so you don't burn <laughs> or get burned. <laughs> Although some of us get burned out there, man. <laughs> Glory. You know, the word is specific. God's word doesn't come back void. Amen? Amen. The word says something very important. It says, submit to God, resist the devil. Actually, it says, submit to God, then you can resist the devil. Amen? Because if you can't submit to God, you can't resist the devil. Amen. No matter what you try to do, he'll still deceive you. Very easily. There's a purpose of submitting to God. Amen? In Galatians chapter 5, would you go there with me, please? Galatians chapter 5. So when we're not submitting to God, we can't resist the devil, then we're willing to jeopardize everything. Amen? So with, can, you, can you all hear me? Amen. Praise God. It's amazing that we, we're willing to jeopardize so many things in our life to fulfill our own needs. In verse 1, Galatians chapter 5. How many know God is able to do far above all we could ever ask or think? Amen. Amen. The word says that Jesus came to bring us life and life abundantly. That the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But one of the influences of the enemy is to bring desires that are out of God's time, out of God's will. And when we cooperate with those things, it jeopardizes so many things in our life. Jeopardizes. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, let's read it together. Is everybody there? Okay, I'm almost there. There we go. Stand fast. Stand fast. That doesn't mean not do anything. It means to stand fast means you fight for what's right. Amen? You fight. And again, if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. If you're not a fighter, you're a loser. And you're going to lose the battles, aren't you? If you're not one that can't fight spiritually, you will lose the fight. And you will not be victorious in what God has planned us to be. He's already predestined me and you to be victorious, amen? But without cooperation with the Spirit of God, without fighting in the Spirit and spiritual warfare, we do not become victorious. We lose the fights. You can come to church for the rest of your life and still lose every fight. Because if you don't put into effect what you learn, then you lose. That's why we believe we receive and we what? Execute. Everyone say, I'm an executor. I'm an executor. That sounds good. <laughs> we execute darkness. Amen? All the lies and deception. We got to be executed. We should hate evil. Yes. How many of you know a lie is evil? Amen? How many of you know the world is ruled by evil? So you're going to be pressed to do evil. You're going to be pressed in every area to do something that is displeasing to God. And what may you think be, see, what the enemy does is bring a justification and reasoning to say, well, this doesn't please God. It's just something that it's my want, my desire. But if it's out of God's time, out of God's will, and out of not submitting, especially with authority and everything else, then what happens is we fall out of order. And when we fall out of order, we jeopardize many things. Amen. Amen? People have jeopardized their licenses by driving drunk. People have jeopardized their licenses by running many stop signs, red lights, all kinds. People have jeopardized so many. They've jeopardized relationships. They've jeopardized jobs, marriages, children and parents, jeopardized 
Stand fast means fight. Amen? So to stand fast, therefore where? In the liberty. That word liberty means what? Freedom. Freedom. By which Christ has made us free. And do not be what? Come on, read it with me. Entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hello. Is bondage freedom? No, it's the opposite. And when we come under bondage, we actually jeopardize freedom. Man, there isn't anything greater than to have peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. And, and, and walk away of all the torment, the fears, and everything else that the world tries to impress on us. It says, indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every manner who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor, nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. You ran well who hindered you from disobeying the truth. You know what? It's pretty amazing. You may never read the Bible in your life, but you still know what truth is. Because you're born with it. It's in us. We know what truth is. We may not know the whole truth. Amen? We may not know the deep things of truth, but we know enough to know what pleases God and what displeases God. Everyone is born with it. Hallelujah. In verse 8, this persuasion does not come from, from the Lord who calls you. It says a little leaven leavens a whole lump. So if it doesn't come from the Lord, then where does it come from? The enemy. Amen. The devil. Demons. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even uh, would cut, uh, cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been what? Called. We've been called to freedom. Far be it that we should jeopardize freedom. Man, I, you know, when I was an addict... I jeopardized everything. I jeopardized my marriage, my wife, my children, all possessions. Who cares about possessions, though? You can have everything in the world and still be bound. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. What good is to have everything and, and still be bound and miserable? You, you know, many people who have everything that don't know Christ, they're, trying to, they're tormented of losing everything. But when you have Christ, you don't care. Because your heart is to please him, not man. Amen. It says, for you, brethren, have been called to freedom. Only do not use this freedom as an opportunity to what? For the flesh. For the flesh. But through love serve what? One another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you what? Bite and devour one another. Beware, lest you become consumed by one another. I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Again, stand fast, fight, maintain, continue. There is a law that leads to bondage, and there is a law that leads to freedom. There is a law that leads to bondage, and there is a law that leads to freedom. And laws are established to, to do two things. It's to protect and to direct. Everyone say protect and direct. One law leads to religion. And one law leads to relationship. Jesus came to destroy religion. He came to bring a relationship. Amen? Amen. That's why it's important that we fall in love with the person. Everything that a word should bring us to the person. If it's not bringing you to the person, then you're bound by religion. Because what happens if you lose your Bible? Amen? Oh, I need my Bible. No, you need the Holy Ghost. 
You need the presence of God. Is everybody okay? In John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse 31. Would you read it with me, please? Is everybody there? Amen. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you what? If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall what? You shall what? Hello. Know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will what? Make you free. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That means you must have relationship with him. There is also what we call the spirit of truth. That's why it's important to be filled with the spirit, follow the spirit, be led by the spirit, and the spirit will guide you to all truth. They answered him and said, we are Abraham's descendants and have, been in bond, ha, ha, have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will make me free? Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. But a son abides forever. That's relationship, isn't it? Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. That means relationship. Amen? You shall be free indeed. Jesus, again, is the way to freedom. There's the truth that brings freedom. He brings freedom. He brings life. Amen? There is a law of freedom. It's called freedom's law. And we're going to talk about that in a second. James 1. So today's teaching Today's training is freedom's law. You mean freedom is a law? Yes. Why? Because what's the purpose? To protect and what? Direct. James 1. Oh, glory. Jesus said something very, very powerful. He says, if you obey me, if you love me, you'll obey me. If you love me, you'll obey me. That means you've got to love someone else more than yourself. If you love me, you'll obey me. James 1, verse 16. Do not be what? Deceive. Deceive, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. Why? So we could be free. That we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to what? Hear. Hear. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with the meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be what? Doers of the word. And not hearers only, deceiving yourself. A lot of people can quote scripture but can't obey it. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who what? Looks into the perfect law of liberty. It's called freedom's law. And what? continues in it, that means it takes cooperation, and is not a forgetful hearer, that means puts it to practice, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and can't keep his tongue tied in a bow, <laughs> cannot bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is Useless. Useless. God is not looking for religion. 
The enemy is the one who established religion. The Lord came to bring freedom so that we could have a relationship. Amen. But see, if the heart is distant, if it's disconnected, there cannot be a relationship. Again, it goes back to love. If you love someone, you, you're willing to do whatever it takes to maintain the relationship. People jeopardize relationships. They jeopardize. Why? Because, first of all, they're in love with more of themselves than they are with God. Amen? Does everybody get this? Jeopardizing so many things. Man, you're all quiet this morning. Is everybody cool? Yeah. <laughs> you been outside too long yesterday or something? Second Corinthians 3. <laughs> yes, I was a... I was a uh, victim of jeopardizing myself, not using sunscreen yesterday, or a long shirt. <laughs> yes. And, 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 you know, I, I kept hearing the Lord saying, why don't you go, you know, and then my wife confirmed it. She came, well, you want some sunscreen? No, I'm all right. We'll just be a few more minutes. Eight hours later. I got fried wings, man. <laughs> Praise God. I turned the light off last night and I glowed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, I jeopardized my sleep because every time I turned, it was like, ah! If I would have just obeyed. Amen. If I would have just obeyed. Amen. Gosh, how dumb can I be and still breathe? Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Amen. Would you read it with me, please? Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at him. Of what was what? Passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away where? In Christ. So there, there's still a bondage, isn't there, without Christ? But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the what? To the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away. Taken away. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit. He's called the Spirit of Truth. He's called the Holy Spirit. He's called the Spirit of Comfort, Counsel, Might, Wisdom, Knowledge. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is freedom. So we do everything that we possibly can to not play, make place for the devil, but to always make place for the Spirit of God. Why? Because when we don't, we jeopardize. We jeopardize things. It can be the smallest, simple things like sunburn. Or leaving something somewhere because the Holy Spirit said, hey, go get this. Or disobedience. Anything at all. Anything that can jeopardize, and there's some things that are jeopardized that are large, aren't there? How about salvation? That's the greatest thing that people can jeopardize. Well, the wages of sin is what? Death. The, the one thing that we don't want to jeopardize right now is to disconnect with the Spirit of God. We don't want to do anything to disconnect. We do everything to maintain connect, no matter what it is. So again, we must continue in the protection and the direction of the laws of, the, of freedom or the laws of the spirit to stay free from bondage, torment, and a slave to sin. We must do everything and anything we can. Second Peter chapter 5.
So that means we must avoid things, right? One of the things that the Holy Spirit will always do is he leads us to all truth. He tells us things to come. Why? So we can avoid the traps of bondage. First Peter chapter 5. Oh, I'm sorry. I say second Peter. Okay, first Peter. We'll go to the first Peter first. First Peter chapter 5. Is everybody there? Verse 5. First Pete chapter 5, 5. Likewise. You younger people, now that has nothing to do with age. It has to do with maturity. Amen. Everybody got it? You younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Those are other, other mature. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, not pride. For God resists the what? The proud, but gives grace to the what? Humble, therefore what? Humble yourself. How many of y'all know to... Submit to God, you're going to have to eat some humble pie. Just put some whipped cream on it, enjoy it. Therefore, humble yourself, right? Under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you in due time. In other words, release something to you in due time that is going to encourage you. It may even promote you. How many of you know God gives the increase? Amen. Amen. But it takes something. Cooperation. It takes submission. He doesn't give the increase when there's disobedience. Amen? He gives the increase because the word says once you've completed the will that he asked you to do, then the promise is released. Verse 7, what? Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be what? Sober, which means what? Alert. Be alert. Turn your sonar on, your radar. Beep, 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 beep. Be what? Vigilant, which means consistent. Consistent. You cannot be alert without being consistent. You cannot uh, uh, submit to God in the arena and, and respond to the things of God if you're not consistent. It must be a part of your life now. It's not a Sunday. It's not a Friday. It's not a Tuesday. It's an every day. And it's not just part of the day. It's all day. 24-7. Every breath. Every thought must be submitted to God. Everything. He must be in front of me and you all the time. Therefore, be sober, be vigilant, because you're what? Adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. Devour. So we're supposed to resist him, aren't we? Well, how are you going to resist him if you don't practice the truth? If you're not submitting to God, you will not resist him. But it says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody goes through it. Everybody's going to be tempted every day. We're hard-pressed in every area. You know, people blame the devil. Well, you know who brings stuff on? We do. Amen. We bring it on ourselves. Amen? Amen? Why? Why do we bring it on ourselves? By not submitting to God. You know, you can blame the devil all you want. Well, the devil did this, the devil did this, he tempted me. Yes, he's going to tempt you every single day. So you can't make the excuse that the devil tempted you because that's a part of life. Welcome to the earth. <laughs> Again, the Holy Spirit will guide us because the enemy is always trying to seek a trap. Amen? He's always trying to trap us he always wants to compromise something because so, we don't think about what's getting ready to happen. We don't, we don't think about the after effects. We don't think about how many people are going to be hurt, even hurt ourselves. How many people losing trust, losing trust with the Lord. Amen? We don't, we don't because the enemy comes. Listen, the world is polluted. Amen? It's polluted. So again, we've got to be alert. We've got to be consistent in freedom laws. Why? To avoid traps, things that are pollutions in the, uh, of this world because the enemy is definitely enforcing 
bondage. That's his job. In 2 Peter chapter 2, would you go there? Is everybody there? Verse 18. Let's speak it together. It says, For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom, they themselves are slaves of, cooper of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle, they are entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the what? Than the beginning. Why? Because they're willing to jeopardize. Verse 21. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his vomit and the soul having washed to her wallowing in the mire. Now, the word dog means demonized person. So when a person is influenced by demonic activity, it always does the wrong thing. Has everybody got it? It seeks self, not God. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. You know, if we would just stop for a moment and, and, and see it all the way through, hear it all the way through, and see what we're jeopardizing. Is my decision or my action going to jeopardize something? So there's got to be laws. Remember, laws are for protection and what? Direction. So the enemy can't steal. In verse 1, please. Proverbs 16, verse 1. Let's read it. The preparations of, a, of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. That means acknowledge him, right? The Lord has made all for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Everyone proud in heart is a what? Abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from Evil. See, without relationship, there's no reverence, honor, and respect. So evil becomes compromise. Okay, it's just evil. Disobedience, ah, that's all right. People don't realize what's happening. That's what's going on right now in the world. There's a big compromise going on. The word says in the latter days, people will be lovers of themselves, <coughs> lovers of money. Proud, blasphemers. Why? Because of the influence. They are jeopardizing their relationship with the Lord. It's a terrible thing to jeopardize our relationship with the Lord. Terrible. Why? Because the end result is death, hell, and separation forever. How can we even consider jeopardizing those things? Amen? Is everybody okay? So when a man, verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. It doesn't mean that we won't make a mistake. Amen? You and I are going to make mistakes. Boy, did I make a mistake yesterday. I'm suffering for today. Because there's a consequence of every wrong decision. Amen? <laughs> but there are some decisions that are made that are jeopardizing people's lives. Relationships. Jobs, jeopardizing the blessing with the, of the Lord, jeopardizing so many things, jeopardizing freedom. I love being free. I love to be able to worship. I love freedom because I love God's presence. And I love the Lord. He must be the most important thing in our life no matter what. John 6. You know, I, uh, I came out, I, um, 
because we got blessed with this uh, vehicle, so it's, it's a red uh, vehicle. And I, w I went into Publix, and I came home from jail, and I went into Publix, and I came out, and I was carrying groceries, and I saw this red vehicle there. I opened up, went in, and set the groceries down. I said, man, this car smells different. <laughs> and uh, I looked behind me, and there was a baby seat there. I'm thinking, oh, snap. I'm in the wrong car. I'm out in Publix. I mean, that's all I need, you know? I'm thinking, gosh, and that, and that simple, crazy decision could have jeopardized a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> I got in that car quick. <laughs> Stooped down. It's like, oh, man. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, man, I hope they didn't, people that owned this car didn't walk out. <laughs> They'd be calling the police. Man, I'd be trying to explain this, huh? I almost jeopardized my freedom. Just went in the wrong car. I noticed the scent. Then I saw the baby thing. Yeah. Wrong car. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got out of there quick, man. <laughs> in John 6, 60. See, simple mistakes can jeopardize some things, you know. <laughs> Would you read it with me? Therefore, it says, many of my disciples, when they heard this, said, this is hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? Would you read this with me? It is the what? Spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are what? And they are life. In other words, his words are law. Everyone say the words of the Lord, the of the Lord. Are, law. are law. They're called words of life. His words are law. It supersedes to the natural laws. In Jeremiah 7. No, let's go to Luke 9. <laughs> Luke 9. <laughs> Luke chapter 9. In verse 23. Freedom, freedom's law. Are you ready for it? Of course, we know that every word he speaks says is law, right? In verse 23, he said to them well, all. He said to them all, didn't he? If anyone what? Desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Deny himself. Deny himself. Deny himself. Deny himself. Everyone say, deny myself. deny myself. Take up his cross daily. Not when you feel like it. Feelings have nothing to do with this. And what? And follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Save it. For what profit it is to a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or what? Or lost, jeopardized. Look at the jeopardizing in here. People jeopardize their eternal life. The law, the freedom's law, always starts off with maintaining an arena of denying yourself. We are not first. In fact, the word says who is, it has got, in other words, we should be last. Whoever is last is what? First. So we must be able to see everything involved in every decision. What we do is what I'm doing, jeopardizing my relationship with my wife, my spouse, my children, my business. What am I doing that's jeopardizing 
Am I, my relationship, first of all, is with the Lord. Am I jeopardizing my trust with him? Am I asking things because I want something out of God's timing because I want it now? Amen? The Lord is my shepherd. I won't lack. He does far above all we could ever ask or think. Amen? He makes a way that there seems to be no way. <laughs> and he's faithful all the way to the end. Denying ourselves. Picking up our cross means follow, to battle, to fight, and, and then to follow. Because the word follow means believe. Does everybody get this? So if you can't deny yourself and you're not willing to fight, then you obviously ain't believing. Jeremiah 7. Freedom's law. Remember, everything he speaks is law, isn't there? Jeremiah 7, verse 23. You know, the word jeopardize is kind of a harsh word. But so many times we've been coloring over it. Erase, put it in the side. You know, people use the, people use the word of God as an excuse. Oh, all things are going to work together. Oh, it's going to work. Oh, forget it, man. It ain't going to work unless you cooperate. Listen, a car doesn't start itself unless you go in and turn the key on or have some kind of a doomahickey. Amen? Water don't come out unless you go turn the faucet on. You can pray over that faucet all day long. It ain't coming out. There's got to be cooperation. And you're going to stink unless you take a shower. You can pray all day. Hello? You're not going to get clean by standing out there going, oh, God, clean me. He's going to go, take a shower. <laughs> Praise God. And don't go to bed with dirty in your sheets. <laughs> get clean. <laughs> Did everybody get it? How many of y'all know he directs us? The little things that jeopardize so much. <laughs> Praise God. I don't like I don't know that one. Somebody needs it. Don't go to bed dirty. <laughs> Jeremiah 7, 23. <laughs> Verse 23, is everybody cool? <laughs> we well, didn't get hot. <laughs> Let's read it, 23. But this is what I commanded them, saying what? Obey. Obey my what? My voice, and I'll be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be what? Well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts, and went backward and not forward. Were they jeopardizing anything? Yes, a lot. Since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt until now, I have even sent to you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up, early and sending them. Yet they did not obey me and inclined their ear, but stiffened their neck, and they did worse than their fathers. Therefore you shall speak to all these words to them, but they will not obey you. You shall also call to them, but they will not answer you. So you shall say to them, this is a nation that does not obey the what? Voice of the Lord their God, nor what? Receive correction. Why? Truth has depart, perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Because they're no longer speaking truth. What did he command them? Obey my voice. Obey my... So you, do you have to deny yourself first? Yeah. Yeah. What are we willing to jeopardize? Amen? 
Go to Matthew 6. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Freedom's law. Verse 31. Matthew 6, 31. Let's speak it. Therefore what? How many of y'all know when it says therefore? It means you got a choice to cooperate. Especially if you got a choice to cooperate. Therefore, here are you ready? Do not what? Worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. That is a law. It's a law for provision, isn't it? Amen? How about sowing and reaping? That's a law, isn't it? Those are spiritual laws, man. Whatever you sow, you reap. He who sows abundantly reaps abundantly, right? And sparingly. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, or, or for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. It's a law of provision. Jeremiah 9. In verse 12. Who is, who is the wise man who may understand this? And who is he who, to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken, that he may declare it? Why does the land perish and burn up like a wilderness so that no one can pass through? And the Lord said, because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it. So they were jeopardizing their freedom, weren't they? They were jeopardizing their possessions and land. But they have walked according to the dictates of their own hearts, and after the bales, which their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, this people, with wormwood, and give them water of gall to drink. I will scatter them also among the Gentiles, whom neither they nor neither they nor their fathers have known. And I will send a sword after them until I have consumed them. Boy, they jeopardized a lot, didn't they? This is the final result if we keep allowing all of these things to build up and all the things that we're jeopardizing. In fact, the leaders of this country this country have jeopardized the freedom of this country because they have not followed the ways of the law but the dictates of their own evil hearts. They've been influenced by the spirits of demonic forces, doctrines of demons. They are self-serving. It's amazing how government was supposed to serve man, but now man serves them. But thank God there's a new government coming. Hallelujah. And Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. In verses 1 through 3, would you read it with me? We're going to proclaim this. Isaiah 61. If you ain't free, you can't give free. We're to be proclaiming freedom to people wherever we go. We're to proclaim freedom. We're to introduce them to Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if you're not free yourself, you got no right to speak to people about being free. Introduce them to Jesus and run. You need Jesus. 
You may hang around too long and they'll see your fruit. Hello? <laughs> Verse 1, let's speak it. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He is a what? Anointed me. To do what? To preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to what? Proclaim liberty, freedom to the what? Captives. Why? We want to introduce them to freedom laws. And what? On the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To what? Comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? That he may be glorified. We are to proclaim freedom, but you got to be free to proclaim it. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John 2. Verse 15. We know this very well. What does it say? Don't love the world. Why? The world is polluted. You'll jeopardize everything if you love the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the, Father, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? The lust of the eye, the lust of the, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So do you have to be obedient to do the will of God? And if you're not, are we, are we willing to jeopardize everything? Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. It says that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they may be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. In other words, we're to be led, aren't we? We should get to that place where we have an understanding of what is going to be jeopardized in every decision that we do. Words that we speak. Associations. But again, if there's no relationship, there's no care. Amen? Amen? If there's really not a relationship with the Lord, there's no care. Everything's jeopardized already. Doesn't have, matter how much money, how much you've done, how many work. It has nothing to do with it. Anything that's before your relationship with him, we're in jeopardy. And I want to close at 2 Corinthians 6. This is... Uh, Another law to maintain freedom. What does it say in verse 14? Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God. And they'll be my people if they do what? Come out from among them. And be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch. Do not agree. Do not associate. Do not look upon. What is unclean. And I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us what? Cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, and perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Reverence, honor, and respect. Why? Relationship. Freedom's law. All of freedom's law. It's all over. The whole word is freedom's law. Amen? You want to be free? You walk in the law that God has given me and you to what? Protect and direct. Protect and direct. Protect and direct. So that we can be free. Again, there isn't anything greater than freedom.
and we allow the Spirit of the Lord to take possession of everything. All of our decisions, our walk, everything, we allow Him to take possession and dominion. And without doing that, we go astray because there's a tremendous falling away right now. Don't get caught up in it. Tremendous falling away. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Again, Master, I ask that you continue to search us through, remove those things that offend you, bring your light, truth, and life with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may discern. Help us to see things through, hear things through, that we do nothing to jeopardize our relationship with you, our families, loved ones, and the things you've blessed us with. Lord, we commit to you all things. We cast our cares upon you. And we call on your name. And we ask that by your spirit, you will continue to convict us, to guide us, and to perfect us, that we may be your sons, of sons and daughters of trophies for your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.